drink that intro in because it's the last time you'll probably see it slash hear it for a while. It's the last tra- Celtic tra- it's too, too late for this pish anyway. It's the last Celtic transfer talk of the summer transfer window, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're sitting here uh, just waiting and waiting and waiting for the announcement, aren't we? We're waiting to hear um, for Oliver... Um, Abiel the guard's signing. We haven't got anything official yet from the club. Uh, Fabricio Romano still on the case, I think. A few other people still on the case. It looks done, but dusted. In fact, we're going to get a few things up on screen in a moment. But hello, welcome. I mean, if you're joining me, if you're joining me at quarter past 11 on a Thursday evening, when I could see a lot of you there. Hello, everybody. Hello, Alex. Hello, nice to see you. Callum, Kean, Cal, nice to see you. If you're all joining me at this time on a Thursday evening, God fucking bless you because you should be fucking, you should be doing something better than this. But I guess deadline day content is deadline day content, isn't it? And I do it every year. I do these streams every single year um, on, on this channel where we go through deadline day live and we talk about it. Usually I'd get someone on with it, but it is late. We only got back from filming the podcast, that, but I got back in my house about half past ten. Um, and I've obviously been out record. I've been YouTubing all day, the full-time job now, isn't it? I genuinely got up this morning, went to Parkhead, recorded, came back, edited, chilled for a bit, I had my dinner. I, I seen Alex asking what I had for dinner. I seen Alex asking. I had um, chicken burgers and noodles. Um, very, very council dinner, but I love it. Council dinner. Um, and what was the, what, what did I do after that? Then I went to do the podcast, I've came back, and it's, it's time to stream again, because we're all sitting up waiting, aren't we? We're all waiting for the announcement of all of it. There you go. It's announced. It's announced. We go live. Breaking news. <laughs> Just like that. Wow. Wow. We timed that very well. Breaking news. <laughs> Jim White impression. Breaking news here coming from Celtic Park. Celtic have officially announced. Let's get on screen. If I can get it on screen now. Elliot McLean with donation. We'll get up in a minute. It's all about hectic. Thank you very much, Elliot. We'll get it up on the screen in a moment. It has been... Announced, ladies and gentlemen, Oliver Abelgard has signed for Celtic. It's just been announced. Um, as I go live, timed it well. Four forty nine. Get yourself a twenty nugget box. I love that. Thank you, Elliot. I'll try my best to get one tomorrow or something. Um, that's fake. That's fake. That is fake. I've been done. <laughs> that's the stream away. Bye. Cheerio. Cheerio. I've just been done. I've never failed for anything like that in my life. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. What a day. It's a thought of me. It's been a long day. It's been a long fucking day. <laughs> Mate, it looks so real. Do you blame me? <laughs> I'm actually going to die. Oh my god. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> I don't want to continue this stream. <laughs> Mate, it's been a long day. I'm tired. I need my bed. We're still... <laughs> Let's pretend that never happened. We're still awaiting the signing of um, Oliver Abildgaard. He's not signed. He's not... I can confirm he's not signed. I've never, ever, ever, ever been done with anything like that in my life. I've never even fell for them. Like, I see them and I know straight away. You can tell it's been long. You can tell it's been... I just seen someone saying that's fake. And then I looked at the post and I said, there's no even a verification tick there. There's no even a verification... <laughs> the B has. The B today has thrown me off. It's thrown me off. And I, I, I'm on. I'm traumatised. I'm absolutely traumatised being chased with the B. We'll pretend that never happened. The height of professionalism on this channel. Like, oh my God. Maybe I should just go to my bed. Maybe I should just go to my bed. I, I have a hot, an absolute beamer. Absolutely. I've got stuff on screen that I wanted to use anyway. I wanted to go through. Um, I've been done an absolute scream. Is that's going to get clipped as well? Like someone is is that's going to be in Twitter? And I just I cannot I cannot be bothered with it at all. Um, yeah, that is a clip. How are we all doing anyway, ladies and gentlemen? Let's start again, shall we? How are we all doing? I hope you're all having a good evening. We're just going to chill until the deadline. So we've got about 40 minutes of just having a laugh. Uh, we recorded the podcast tonight and it went it went really well. So let's let's talk about Abiel Guard for a little bit and we can all have a chat with each other and hopefully I don't get done again. People are going to be sending me fake stories. Let's get this up on screen first. This uh, was from Abiel Guard's Instagram. 
earlier this evening, so it, it does look all uh, but finished um, for him at Ruben Kazan. He put up on Instagram uh, half an hour ago now saying, I will be forever grateful to Ruben Kazan for my time in Kazan. I made uh, lifetime friends and shared more fond memories than I could ever imagine. Thank you to the fans, staff and everyone connected to the club. You will have a special place in my heart. Finally, a huge thanks to Lenoid Slitsky uh, who made me the player that I am today. Um, so there you go. That was a statement on his Instagram earlier on. Um that's 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 all you need to know. The deal is done. We've heard all day that he's he's been in Glasgow. Um, he's been you know, Christ. Everybody's fallen for that. It looks so real, doesn't it? It looks so real. Everybody's fallen for it. I'm just scrolling through the TL just now, and I, there's so many people quote retweeting that that aren't being ironic. Like they're they're genuinely believing it. But no wonder the graphic looks tremendous. Whoever spent time editing that, well done. Well, well done. Like congratulations. That's that is good. But there you go. That was Oliver Abildgard earlier on uh, today. Uh, or, well, I say earlier on today, half an hour ago on, on Instagram, uh, releasing a statement to the Ruben Kazan support and all the rest of it um, for his time at the club. So basically confirming that he will be joining Celtic. Now, the question is, uh, what are the, the exact details of the deal we're yet to hear? I've been searching ever since I've got in to, to try and dig away. Yep. Yep, somebody's somebody's cut. Yep, Aiden's got me screenshotted already. Um, I've been searching all day since I got in, and uh, there's nothing yet um, to, to to suggest what the deal definitely is. Thank you, Max Stark, for the Stark for the donation. There's nothing to suggest it's definitely a permanent deal or a loan deal. I think we'll just find out when it comes to light. But um, by the looks of his post, it's a, it's a permanent deal. You would imagine, or at least a loan deal with a with a kind of obligation to buy because he's he's well well and truly um getting his, his farewells out there isn't he he's, he's well and truly you know saying goodbye there's like so there's no way back from um he's pretty much accepted that's the end of his uh ruben kazan career so we're just waiting we've got what 30 i'm seeing the clips come through thank you oh by the way We'll come on to that, Ian. That's the next topic. I much appreciate the £10 donation. Much appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. Um, it, is, it goes a long way, so thank you. I really do appreciate that, Ian. We'll come on to your question in a moment. Alex has just reminded me there is one more thing I do have on my screen to share. Um, let's go to the other story on the outside of things. Not as big news, um, but there has been confirmation given on the, uh, the departure of Liam Shaw. Liam Shaw has left Celtic. He's joining Morecambe on a year-long loan deal. Um, he will go down there into the League One in England. The, of course, the third tier of English football, where you'd imagine he would need a big, big season to get anywhere near the Celtic side, anywhere in the, the near future. I think that Liam Shaw... As someone who will never play at the level for Celtic, the highest level at Celtic, I don't think we're going to see him play at a senior level. This loan move is probably um, needed for him this season, but I don't see him come back. He wasn't an Ange Postacoglu signing. Um, and Liam Shaw was someone who quietly impressed me in, in the pre-season that he had in his, his first window here. Um... But, you know, he, he never had a chance to build on that. And, and you know what? I didn't expect him to get that chance. It, there's obviously significant differences in quality um, between him and everybody else. And I'm absolutely just gutted. I'm looking at that video just traumatising me on the TL. It's traumatising me. Absolutely traumatising me. Yeah. Right, okay, let's stop the screen share. Let's, let's get a conversation in with you guys. And let's bring up Ian's comment. Thank you once again, Ian, for the donation. I'm very much appreciative. You'll see me you know, checking the, the, the right-hand side. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. We Here we go. Don't worry, Ian, but we'll get to your comment. We will eventually, but here we go, lads. This time, I'm not falling for any nonsense. I'm not falling for any nonsense. We are getting something. Please, sir, can I have some more? I love that. A wee bit of Oliver. Is that, is it Oliver? I, I want to listen to it. Is it? It looks like Oliver. Yep, it is. Brilliant. Brilliant. So the teaser's out, which means we're probably minutes away. More? Um, probably minutes away now from the official announcement, so we'll keep our eyes peeled over on the right-hand side of the screen. But there we go. Basically, all you need to know to that it's coming. It's coming very, very quickly. Um, and we'll keep an eye on Celtic's Twitter 
um, and we'll see what happens. But you'd imagine we're we're moments away probably from from getting the official announcement that Oliver um, Abildgard will be a Celtic player. Now I hope I'm getting the pronunciation correct on Abildgard. But let's, as we wait, let's uh, let's do a little bit of let's do a little bit of searching and let's have a little look because, you know, and the admin does deserve it. He's brilliant, love it. Let's go into um, transfer mark for a moment because do you know what? I've not had the chance to sit down and look at all of the guard. I've not had the chance to sit down and, and do my research on him that I usually do when when I tasked with a, a new signing that we don't know much about. I can confirm that David Turnbull is away to West Ham. It's a shame. Um, but all of the Abel Guard, we've got his transfer marked profile here. We're just awaiting on the the official announcement from Celtic now as well. I'm trying to keep an eye on my phone to see if the notification pops through for the official statement from the club. It's still only to be all of a twist sort of um, clip that we've got so far. So let's get this up on screen just now. It's nice to see over 600 live viewers at half past midnight, uh, half past 11. That's insane. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Just a chill one, you know. I'm just having a just having fun here. So here we are. Here's the profile of Oliver Abildgard. Uh, valued at six point three million pounds on transfer market. Of course, we're not entirely sure now. I think that yeah, Alex, have you not heard David Turnbull at West Ham? Have you not heard? Some people are going to fall for that. That's awful, isn't it? Jig's a jig's a, a naughty boy, a naughty naughty boy. Um, anyway, a valued at six point three million pounds. Valued at six point seven five. Of course, transfer marked rate um, valuations don't exactly mean much. But I think what I was reading was that apparently there was a one million pounds release for him to get him out of the situation. It's kind of like it's been capped for Denmark as well. Remember, so you're looking at a Danish international um, who you know is obviously a very talented football player. Um, I don't know much much about him from reading. It looks good. So this is his kind of career stats to to this this part. Um, in the Super League, in sixty five appearances, Premier League, fifty nine appearances. So he's played a lot of senior football, which is obviously one hundred sixty seven appearances, ten goals, nine assists. Most appearances coming from the central defensive midfield position. We'll go to his seasonal stats. Another tweet. Another tweet. We have another tweet. We have another tweet. Apparently, I'm seeing another tweet. Is this the statement? Is this it? Is this official? We'll come back and visit them. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is brilliant, this. This is absolutely tremendous. Let's get this up on screen. We need to get this up right now. Let's switch over to Celtic's Twitter. This is absolutely brilliant. Bang. I think they've used FIFA. That is tremendous. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Official graph. All of your Abiel Guard has sight. The admin is on fire. I'll let it play for you again. Look at this. That's brilliant. FIFA career mode. Let's just let's let's break this trailer down. Let's do a trailer breakdown here. Brilliant. Look at this. Total spent today. Blah blah. Players in Maida, Carter Vickers, Jota Sigris, Bernabe Moy, Jens, Haksabanovic. Brilliant. Look at that. Top deals, latest deals. This is tremendous. This put me in the mood for having the game. Oliver uh, Abiel Gard has signed for the club. That is tremendous. Tremendous content. Brilliant. And that's the official announcement, ladies and gents. We've not been trolled this time. We've not fell for nonsense this time. That is the official word. That's all you need to know there. There's the graphic on screen. Breaking news that Abiel Gard has signed with half an hour left on the clock for transfer deadline day. I think the admin does need a rise, doesn't he? It deserves a, a, a great big rise. The creativity levels, I mean, you know what? I can't wait to see what they, they produce at the weekend. I cannot wait to see what they produce potentially for um, the, the, the Rangers game. You know, result depending, obviously. But if we beat Rangers at the weekend, wow, 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 wow. Right, let's pause for a moment and let's go up and see if there's an official statement on the website yet. Yeah, I don't think there will be because usually they would link it. But we'll go and have a look. There's nothing yet on the website. I was hoping there would maybe be a an opening and sort of say, oh, wait, there is, there is, there is. There's an official statement on the website, but not very long, not very long at all. But let's, sorry, my hair's very greasy and stuff as well. Let's get on to this. Oh, what have I done? I fucked it. Share screen. Let's get on to... Um, this here, this is obviously 
the news, the statement that has been released. Celtic Football Club is delighted to announce the signing of Danish midfielder Oliver Abelgaard on a season-long deal subject to international clearance. The 26-year-old who has played in the Russian Premier League with Ruben Kazan and with Alborg in the Danish Superliga has also been capped by Denmark. Oliver is our ninth summer of the summer transfer window and everyone at Celtic is delighted to welcome Oliver to the club. Um, so there you go, subject to international clearance ninth signing of the window by all accounts it looks like uh, a permanent transfer it looks as though this is going to be straight in um offer accepted all that nonsense in the video as well i think it's all straight sale i don't know what the fee and such will be will be uh around or whatever but paul cuddy thank you very much paul has uh, given us a statement so that's nice that's good we have made our ninth signing of it should we make this should we make this like official should we try and make this like like they do should I get the... Wait, no, I don't want that. Go away. Go away. What I'm wanting is, like, the banner saying, like, Celtic have signed. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Let's make this, like, Sky Sports quality. Let's do this. Wait, I get his name. Uh, Oliver Abildgaard. Let's copy and paste. Right? Watch this. Right? We're ready for this. This is where it becomes... This is where it becomes official. Celtic sign. Oliver Nab... Oh, God, it's not in capital letters. Let's, oh, this is this is annoying. Let's bear with me, lads. We're going to talk and we're going to get through all your questions. We're going to have a chill one tonight. It's not as serious as... I'm not trying my best here to keep, like, the fast-paced talking and all that up. I am shattered, let me tell you that, for nothing. Been up for the early dawns. I'm getting tickets sold. I was up today and we got, we got our Donetsk tickets booked. We've got our... Um, what's the other game? Not Madrid. Forgot the other game now. Leipzig, we've got our tickets booked, so we've been up all day doing all that, and it's been a fucking fast bang. How good's that look, yeah? Is that not what you love to see? Celtic have signed Oliver Abelgaard. He is here, ladies and gentlemen. What one looks better? That's the one you want, isn't it? Celtic signed Oliver Abelgaard. He is here. It's official. Um, brilliant news. Brilliant. Can we get another one? Could we get another one? Could there be someone else coming through the door? We've got 28 minutes. Who knows? Celtic could really surprise us. Um, but we'll wait and see. We'll keep our eyes peeled on the timeline, but we know that Abu Gard has signed. Let's get back to what I was uh, doing. Um, so Celtic have also put out another tweet just uh, with the, the statement that was released, basically the exact same things. Celtic Football Club is delighted to announce the signing of Danish midfielder Oliver Abu Gard on a season... Oh, wait, there we go. Season-long loan. Did that... Did, season-long deal. Right. Okay. Right. That's word, word, that's wording. Didn't, didn't notice that. That tired again. A, a season-long deal. So, you know, that's that's interesting. Let's pull this up for a minute. Pull it up. Pull it up. Let's pull it up. Let's pull this up for a minute. I wonder what a season-long deal means. Is that a season-long loan deal? Is that a season-long one-year contract? I think we, we need more details. And I'm going to presume... Now that I've clarified it myself and read through it, I think that I'm going to assume now uh, that that means you know we are um, we're going to see a, a loan deal with an option to buy at the end of it, or an obligation to buy, similar to what it was like with with Dyson Maeda. Um, so yeah, I think you know we'll, we'll hear more about it obviously over the next few hours, maybe if we're lucky, and if not, the next few hours, then we'll definitely hear tomorrow anyway more about the actual deal itself let's get back to my actual my actual screens and such because it's much cleaner looking when i have all my colors and everything else on the screen so there you go that's that let's uh have a, a deep dive back into here just now for people that haven't seen too much about them um in the premier league uh, for the 21 22 campaign 20 appearances this is his kind of defensive midfield that is his bread and butter central midfield defensive midfield most of our appearances coming from there, but it's good that we've now signed someone in that area. You know, we needed someone who could play in the defensive midfield role. And we've got someone who's going to come in and do that, haven't we? So I'm very happy with this signing. I'm very happy. I mean, I, I obviously don't know much about it. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I do, but Danish international, valued quite highly, it seems. Ruben Kazan, who have already provided us with two great players and Haxabanovic and Karl Starfelt. You know, I, I feel like this is just... And, and listen, he's not going to come into this team to go straight into the starting eleven anyway. You know, it's not going to happen. I love Capybaras. Thank you for the donation, BM8. I, I love Capybaras so much. So fucking much. 
Um, but anyway, thank you for the donation. Um, you know, he's not going to come in to take Cal McGregor's place to the team. This is a guy who is, is going to come in and just improve the depth straight off the bat, which is fantastic. It's exactly what we need. So 20 appearances last season. The season before that, 20 appearances. He loves a cheese slice, eh? Eight yellows that season, five last season. We know who we're putting on our coupons, aren't that, don't we now? Um, before that, a lot of time spent at Alborg as well in uh, Denmark, of course. Um, Denmark, of course. So, yeah, I'm liking the look of him. Uh, I'll need to go into the deep, the, the deep breakdowns of him. I've seen a few kind of stat packs already. Kind of, I'm not going to go and steal other people's work. Don't put it on screen without asking their permission. But I've seen a few stat packs. You know what to look on Twitter for that kind of thing. So if you want to read more into the player himself and what he's good at and what he's not, um, then you, you know you can you can go over and do that. I'm going to go in quickly. See if I can find one myself, though, just to kind of have a look through um, and, and and look at what his strengths and such apparently are. Uh, so here we go. Uh, Abelgard, per 90 percentile ranking. Um, really good at interception. Won 100% of duels. Wow. Um, good pass percent. Uh, successful pass and total pass and successful dribbles high up there as well. Aerial duels one looks really, really good. Doesn't shoot an awful lot. Key passes isn't big, but you don't expect him to be from that area of the park as much. Um, but looks, yeah, I think he's what what height is he? What height is he? One point nine two meters. That's big. What's that? There's a oh, there's another tweet. I take it it's to do with the interview. I'm not gonna be able to play the interview, obviously, on on stream, but I'll watch that later on. Obviously, I can't really give out much of it just now. Six foot three almost. Wow, he's a big boy, isn't he? He's a big boy. We need height as well on this team. You know, he's gonna be playing in front of the back line. Um, and that's, yeah, Owen bringing up a good point here. Very few, 6'4", people are saying. Apparently, according to, according to transfer market, he's actually 6'3", right? So don't add on an inch, right? Just because you're insecure about your height, right? Calm down. Right, 6'3", apparently. They might be 6'4". But watch, I'll watch the interview um, after my stream. I've got to stay on till, till the deadline, so we've got about 25 minutes to go. Um, but very few back passes fit and just philosophy, of course. But one thing that, is, that I want to talk about is height. As Sky saying it's a loan deal, okay. Well, we've got news there. Thank you very much, John. Um, got a few people, a few people saying that it is going to be a loan deal. Confused why it's just a loan. We'll talk about that in a moment. One point I wanted to make about you know the, the height thing. You know he's playing in front of he's, he's taller than the two centre halves behind him. If it's Starfield and Cameron Carter Vickers playing, which is a nice security factor there. I mean we don't suffer too many issues. We don't suffer a lot of issues. You know we've got um two fantastic centre halves in Starfield and, and Vickers, but you now throw Olivier Abiel guard into the back of the, 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 the into the back line for a corner kick. You put him in the box. You've got someone who can compete. I always look at Rangers with Connor Goldson and sometimes I mean I, I think your centre halves are better than Goldson obviously. But one thing I am envious of is the fact that Goldson just wins every single header. Oliver Abildgaard is someone who's going to come into this team and win every single header. Look at the stats I had up in a moment ago. Um, so we're hearing it as a loan deal. Ross Moran saying confused as to why it's just a loan deal. Well, listen, we are not the ones in the transfer negotiations at the end of the day. So, you know, we really, we really can't, you know, understand right now why it's a loan deal more than anything. We obviously don't know either whether there's an obligation to buy. Now, I want to refer back to his Instagram post from a few moments ago that we put up and it put up about half an hour ago or 40 minutes now say but he put that up on his instagram and it looked like a proper farewell i think that this will be a loan deal with a very strikeable very easy to strike option to buy or with an obligation to buy um because it's a big farewell as if he's never going to be back in kazan so i think it's it's all but certain by the way he's sounding that he's going to come into the team permanently come the end of the season but we're just going to have to wait for more details there's no point speculating and guessing um because i don't mind it being alone listen i'm not confused by it um you know it all comes down to what the fees are and such if the, if, if ruben kazan were asking for a relatively uh, a bigger fee this window than what they could maybe get at the end of this season then obviously we're going to strike on that and you know sometimes these loan deals they work out because we get to see the player a bit better he's coming in here to be an option in depth so you know, I'm I'm fine with it. I'm happy with it. Um, to tell you the truth, so we'll wait and see. So, um, the only thing I've seen from his interview so far is this is a day I've been very much looking forward to ever since 
I heard about the possibility of coming here. Obviously, we only heard about the possibility um, yesterday when his name was first dropped with the possibility of signing for Celtic. We didn't hear anything else outside of that. We never heard um, days... You know, his name popped up for the first time pretty much yesterday, for most folk anyway. Um, so, yeah. Aye, I know I've been clipped. You don't need to remind me, James. You don't need to fucking remind me. You don't. Uh, right, okay, we've got, what, whew, 20 minutes left of the transfer window. Will anything happen in 20 minutes? Will it? I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. But, listen, we can sit and hope and we can sit and wait and see. Um, so let's, you know, I, there was a donation from Ian earlier on. 10 quid donation. Thank you very much once again, Ian, if you're still watching. I've got to get, I've got to get his point up. Let's, let's go and have a look at our transfer window then, eh, because... We need to talk about this window, and then I'm going to get all you guys involved. Um, is that, you know, um, I, I want to, I'm seeing people writing stuff about his interview in the chat, and I'm like, do I believe that, or are you winding me up? I don't want clipped again. Um, usually I'm very fucking particular with who I believe in my sources and everything else. Right, let's get up the transfer window in full. I might not have, it does have Abel Gard. I love how we've signed two players from Ruben Kazan, the new feeder club of Celtic. Let's... Let's get a window up in full, if we can just find it again. I had it a moment ago. Right, we'll get the outs as well. My God, there's been so many outs. So many outs. Right, let's bring this up on screen now, and let's talk about the entire transfer window, and it's in, it's in full, because my, oh my, what a window we've had. Let's start with the ins. Let's start here with the, tra the transfers ins. Wow, nine signings. In this transfer window, <laughs> Raymond, if he said that in the interview, I'll hear it soon. I hope that's true because I actually find that quite funny. Uh, you look sunscaled, mate. Uh, no, I, listen, I've just I've been out all day, mate. I'm shattered. I said that right at the start of the stream. That's why I fell for that fucking fake post. I'm absolutely shattered. It's been a long, long day of content. Um, but I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. I'm not complaining. I'm absolutely not complaining. I couldn't complain about my job. I could not. And you guys have given me it. So um, this is the, the ends. And wow, I'm just sitting here thinking, what a window. We've been given a number as well. We've been given a number. Number 28. He's been given 28. Who does he join in the lists of 28s? Let's see. Celtic shot number. Can anybody think of any 28s off the top of my head? We're just having fun with this stream tonight. I love this. I love being casual. I love casual casual Mondays, Sundays, Thursdays. Uh, let's bring this back up. Um, Celtic number 28s. Who does he join? I love looking through this sometimes. 28s. Oh, uh, Sviatch oh Griffiths, of course, Sviatchenko. Um, who else is in here? Where's 28 again? Sviatchenko, Griffiths. And and I, and then nobody's kind of I don't know I I've, I've never heard of Barry Elliott, James Keatings or Nick Feely. Never heard of any of them. None. Luke O'Connell, of course. I, I remember Luke O'Connell. So there you go. Twenty eight. That's not bad. There's a, a number confirmed for uh, bring back Griffiths. He could score twenty goals easily. Yeah. Um. Right, there's the ends. And wow, just sitting here thinking what a window as I've already quoted. I'm I'm quoting Champagne Charlie. I'm 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 doing it. I'm doing it. I'm I'm so look at everybody that's remembered and look at Cono. Like unbelievable if you remember Luca Cono. <laughs> and what shirt number he wore. Do I give a play the fucking senior game? <laughs> if you remember he was twenty eight, fair play. Um transfers in. Maida, of course, was the first permanent signing of the window as we struck on the, the, the obligation to buy. Carter Vickers and Jota are joining a club permanently from their previous mind it feels how long ago does it feel, by the way? We were sitting waiting patiently. For um for the for Jota, impatiently I should say we weren't waiting patiently we got impatient we were waiting so so long for that and it feels like an eternity ago, and in amongst all of that the business we have done has been unbelievable. Benjamin Segrist, a new backup keeper that's an upgrade on Scott Bain, um an upgrade on Connor Hazard you know what I mean the, but an upgrade on Vasilis Barkat. Brilliant bit of business. A free transfer as well. Unbelievable. Burnaby, three point seven million pounds. He's got a lot to live up for because of that fee. But you know he's gonna he's gonna grow into this team. And eventually, Greg Taylor's too good at the moment to drop. We're just gonna have to be patient for Burnaby. But still, smart business. We went into this window, and straight off the back of the window, you know, or straight as the window started, we all said the priority is signing a left back. That was the priority at this window. Um, and we signed a left back 
and we spent money on a left back, young Argentinian left back at that. So I'm very excited about the future could hold for um, Alexandro Bernabe. Jota, of course, I spoke about. Moritz Jens looks a very stellar signing, a good option. We said we needed depth at centre half. We got depth at centre half. And hopefully, I'm, with the way he started his Celtic career anyway, I'm hoping that we get... Um, I'm hoping that we get him permanently, as long as he keeps that up. Of course, there's still a long season ahead, but I'm hoping he keeps that up, and I'm hoping we, he's such a nice guy as well. Obviously, we're in a lucky position, us that do the fan media, me, myself, you know, Hamish, for example. We're in a lucky position, we get to meet these guys from, from time to time, and I have never had a more pleasant experience with any of the players than I have with Moritz Jens, a gentleman of a guy lovely guy and for that alone I hope he stays at Celtic and he's already made it clear that he wants to stay he's been here five minutes he wants to stay another piece of stellar business Aaron Moy there was doubters there was a lot of fucking doubters when he signed and even till last week there was people who didn't think Aaron Moy would ever be at a level good enough to play for Celtic and in the last couple of games coming off the bench against Dundee United and starting against Ross County on Wednesday night he has shut a lot of people up and people are ranting and raving about him. Because why? Because we picked up a quality footballer in Aaron Moy. An absolute quality footballer. Someone who reads the game so well. Who carries tremendous vision in what he does. Who passes the ball excellently. A real smart signing from Ange Postacoglu that was doubted by a lot. Josh Clark. Good fuck Josh Clark. <laughs> I'm joking. Josh Clark signed for the B team, of course. Goalkeeper for the future. 18 years of age. Um, so, you know, one for the future to watch. And then we've got, obviously, the most recent two, which is just, it's got me buzzing. You know my thoughts on Siad. I don't even need to go through Siad Haksabanovic. I don't need to do that because you know my thoughts on him. But £1.7 million pounds for Siad Haksabanovic is one of the biggest robberies that I think we'll ever see in Scottish football. Quote me on it. Quote me on that. 1.7 million. We've got an absolute steal. He's my favourite player. I love him. And then, of course, Oliver Abildgaard, who we've added tonight. Now, I don't know if it's Abildgaard or Abildgaard, but I'm going with Abildgaard. It just sounds more correct, you could say. So, we've ended the window really strongly with two very good additions from Ruben Kazan. Um, so, look at that. Nine signings in this window. What are we thinking, ladies and gents? Your thoughts on the inside of things. We're going to go through the outs in a moment, but you can't knock that. You can't knock that at all. That's a tremendous transfer window from, from Ange. And fair play, you know, I'm never going to be someone who sits here and, and, and licks the board's arse. I simply won't be. I'll never be that because there's a lot of problems that still go on. But you cannot dispute the fact that they have backed Ange Postacoglu this summer. That's a lot of money spent. What is that? Let's do, let's do the quick math. You're looking at 12.5 million quid. I don't know what it's about. You're looking at 20 million quid, you know? Um, along with wages and everything else. Brilliant business. 10 out of 10 window, says Callum Murray. I'd like Rogic, Rogic back. I think Rogic has moved on. I think we need to get it. Amazing job from Specky. I wish you were talking about me, but obviously Michael Nicholson, he deserves a bit of credit for getting the, the job done. I think, I, you know, I, I I watched, interestingly enough, I watched Ange Postic, no, sorry, Brendan Rogers talking to Chris Kamara the other day, and I don't know when the interview took place, but he was talking about why he left Celtic and the departure of leaving Celtic. And I was very understanding as time went on why Rogers left Celtic. He wasn't getting the financial back and they weren't going to get enough back into the Champions League, so he chucked it and went to rest off. Fair enough. I'm, I'm over it. I've moved on. Because I've got Ange Postacoglu now, so I'm buzzing. But Ange must push this board, man. He must push this board. He must know all the right things to say. He must be the sexiest salesman on earth. Because I honestly don't think if anybody else was in charge of Celtic this season... And last season, I don't think that he, you might not agree with me, but I think with any other manager, the rebuild would have been nowhere near this level of success. And that comes down a lot to obviously Ange's scouting. He's obviously brought in players that we would have never have seen the likes of Kyogo and Dyson Maida and, and Rio Hitati. We'd have never have seen them sign for the club if it wasn't Ange Postacoglu anyway. But I still don't think that any other manager would have pushed for a window like this and money being spent like this. 
I think Ange deserves so much credit for that. But I'm so I'm so chuffed. I would have liked another striker, says John James McShane. I think that's something that might be looked at heading into the, the winter transfer window anyway. Um, maybe James McCarthy on loan tonight. Maybe, potentially. Um, it doesn't look as though there's many teams interested. There's 10 minutes to the window shots. I'd be shocked if something was to go over the line for him now unless someone's really desperate. Let, let's go down to outs. Because look how, how long this list is of players that left the club. A lot were obviously contract ending for, for younger players. So um, if we can maybe change it to end of contracts. These were ones that expired anyway. We weren't, we didn't renew. Afal Abbey, Frankie Dean, Ryan Mullen, Karen Wilkins and Bailey, Brodie Patterson, Barry Coffey. The two big ones, near beats on Tom Rogic, of course, Ewan Henderson, uh, Kerr McEnroy, Luke O'Connell. They all left the club at the end of their contracts. All of them. I wish them the absolute best of luck, especially the younger guys. I mean, obviously, I wish Rogic and Beaton the best of luck as well, but the younger guys, I wish all the best of luck. Um, because, you know, it's hard to break into this Celtic team and it's hard to, to, to really get in there. So I hope wherever they've ended up, you know, some Barnsley, for example, Hartlepool, Cork, I hope they have a, a good career uh, and I wish them all of the best because obviously, it's a, you know, it would have been nice to have seen them come through in Celtic. Um, the ones that we, we shipped off, though, the ones we got rid of, Duhan away, Tranmere Rovers, Bolling Golly we got rid of, Deadwood, Julian away as well, and of course we found loan moves for Liam Shaw, Albin Ayeti, Asasio Rigidi, Ismail Asoro, Adam Montgomery, Liam Scales, Vasilis Barkas, we've shipped out a lot of the players. So you, this is where you see the difference in players who have got potential to, to have minutes in the Celtic team and ones who are just never going to see minutes again. I mean, I, I, you know my love for Barkas, but he's never going to see minutes again for Celtic. As my last sorrow, he's never going to see minutes again for Celtic. There is no point in keeping these guys around the team for so many reasons, but these are boys who are, are eager to play football and they're never going to see it as Celtic again. Why halt their career? Why keep the negativity around the club? It's not deliberate negativity. It's just going to be natural. When you're not playing football, we had to find moves for these guys. And I'm happy for some of them. I'm happy for a Yeti. I'm happy that he can maybe go and now try and find something in his career because he's been at such a standstill for the last four years of it, you know? Um, Sorrow, who looked like he had a bit of potential, he didn't quite realise it at Celtic. There's a chance for him to go and realise it now somewhere else because he wasn't going to get it at Celtic. I'm happy to see all these guys move on, um, not just because I feel like they weren't good enough or anything like that, because for the sake of their own careers, you know, they had to move on. They had to go elsewhere. And there's a lot of bad memories in here as well. Just brings you back to... And it really makes you admire the job that's been done at Celtic since the COVID season. The fact that names like Ayeti, Barca, Soro, Montgomery, Bollingoli, the names that really fucking stick out from that poor season. And now they're gone. They're gone. Nah, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I wish them all the best. I wish every single one of them the best in their career. Will Barnes with a 179 donation. Thank you, Will. Cheers for the great content all of the time. I appreciate it, my man. Thank you. I try my best. I've, I've been enjoying it since I got back. I feel like Magaluf. I really needed it. Made me like kind of sit down and just like whew, chill for a week, not stress about getting content on. I've came back and I'm like, right, let's smash this. Just like Celtic have absolutely smashed this transfer window. So there you go. Um, That's all the ins and outs. I want to know everybody's favourite part of the window who's everybody who's everybody everybody's favourite signing of the window excluding Jota you're not allowed to say Jota who is everybody's favourite signing and why who's the best signing of the window excluding Jota that is the rule you're not allowed to say Jota because obviously Jota is the answer isn't he you're not going to say anybody else but Jota because he's the best player in the fucking league so you know let me know let me know what you think and um, we'll, we'll turn this off just now and we'll wait patiently to see if any more news breaks on Twitter or, or anywhere else. Robin Kazan, Hamish has just tweeted. Brilliant. Um, Favourite signing? Probably Burnaby. Okay, Patrick's on for Burnaby. Cameron Carter-Vickers, seen a lot of that as expected. Uh, Defence really needed help going into the season. Segrist, I love a goalkeeper who is big, confident and loves to come for crosses. I like that. Good justification. Um, <laughs> Martin Boyle. I've spied the chat. Do you know what? I'm welcome to you, mate. If you're if you're not a Celtic fan, let me know your favourite signing of the window. Um, favourite part of the window was when Jota was on his holidays. Favourite signing other than Jota, Cal Cameron Carl Vickers. Couple of Moy shouts, Haksabanovic, my shout as well. Anthony, we're on the same page. Um, a lot of people getting, you know, I'm seeing a, a, a wee bit of Haksabanovic love. Starfield Goat. 
Uh, CCV seems the, the popular one. <laughs> Hacks Ivanovich skills in it. It seems that CCV is obviously the, the popular one, um, and, and rightfully so. I mean, everybody, you, you all want to say is Jota, obviously. Um, but Cameron Carl-Vickers has obviously tried and tested. He's proven playing for Celtic. So, you know. Um, will Celtic surprise us with anything else? I, I'd be stunned at this point. From my understanding, there isn't much else going on. Um, there was a couple of mummers. I remember on the way to doing the podcast, me and Kieran and Callum were in the car and we were all doing a... Well, I was driving, so I wasn't on my phone. <laughs> you don't go on your phone when you're driving. Drive like grands in the car. Um, I wasn't on my phone, but Kieran and Callum were both on their phones just doing their research for the pod and all the rest of it. And there was mummers of a couple of things that could have been in the works behind the scenes, but I think that it could just be absolutely nothing so wait what's this what ah makeup or rumor okay i was like i've seen everything celtic tweeting about dembele for a moment and i was like that's that's pish it was pish he was me he was asked to make up a rumor i'm glad i read the tweet above it before i got uh, before i went on f other anyway anyway brilliant stuff what a window I, i'm honestly i'm absolutely absolutely loving this right now at Celtic. I mean, how good does it feel to be a Celtic fan right now? You know, everything's just good news. It's just good news all the time. Um, I, thought, I, I love that, mate. I love that. My heart. Things like that get my heart. Thank you. Can we get a here we go for the next TSF episode? Well, mate, I'd love to say yes. I would love to say yes. But I'm waiting for a reply in the fucking group chat. <laughs> no one's reply. I was like, we're doing something before the derby this weekend. I need a reply. So, do you think the new boy is handsome enough to start? Of course. And only signs handsome players. Thank you for the £2 donation, Sean. It is much appreciated. But Ange only signs handsome players. Right, we've got three minutes left before the window is closed. Three minutes to go. So, will we hear anything else in three minutes probably not yes i've not I, I, i'm not getting this phone robbed N never again feels fantastic you're right Ellen. I've, lo I've lost Ellen's comment there we go you're right Ellen. it feels fantastic at the moment and, and I, i'm absolutely buzzing for sunday you know what i mean i am absolutely buzzing just because everything right now is absolutely perfect um and i don't want anything to be ruined i don't want anything to be ruined at all listen let's you know you get called obsessed and all the rest of it. But realistically, you've got to sit down for a moment and go, Celtic and Rangers, transfer windows. Celtic and Rangers have both had a big, busy window. Rangers have done a lot of work to their team and it's going to be, it's going to be really fucking interesting to see how the new Rangers players go into this derby game the same as the new Celtic players. But, I feel like we have strengthened our side to take the gap further. I really do. I really, really do. But we'll wait and see. Uh, 179 from Keenan Milligan. Thank you for the donation. I much appreciate it. What's happening with Mikey Johnson? The last that was heard, the last was reported that they were looking to try and, and put forward a move with, with uh, Vittoria Guimaraes in Portugal. But nothing's came from it tonight nothing yet and the window is moments from closing of course things can still happen after the window shuts depending on what stage of the process they're at so there is still room for departure once the window does shut but nothing else apart from apparently they were in talks with Vittoria Guimaraes in Portugal not heard anything since um so I guess I just got to wait and see uh what the situation is with Mikey Johnson um so yeah yeah Guess that's what we can we can see on that front. Frimpong sale on fee, of course. Is Frimpong is Frimpong away? I don't think he's leaving Leverkusen, is he? Not this window anyway. I think it looks like he's staying. He scored two goals at the weekend, didn't he? Um so Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So I've seen everything Celtic just tweeted there that after reading information, I think same as what I said in the stream. Um they hope it ends up a permanent transfer and it thinks it'll end up a permanent transfer. Um yeah, well, I, there'll be clarification tomorrow, so stay, there will be absolutely, there'll be clarification tomorrow on what the, the, the situation is with that. But we are moments away from the window being slammed shut. Thank you, Chris, for the donation. I love it. Thank you. So many comments, fine. And we're nearly in a thousand viewers. And the window is now shut, ladies and gentlemen. 
just like that. The transfer window comes to a close. We are officially on the 2nd of September. Celtic's window is over. And one thing that we've not even touched on. We did not lose anybody in this window. Tom Rogic and Nier Beaton, they've moved on. We didn't lose them. They wanted to move on. We've kept a hand on every single one of our players. We have just got better and better. We've not had to worry about replacing anyone. Because, you know, you can look at Rogic and say, right, we may have to replace him. We had a replacement. Our replacement was Matt O'Reilly. We've not lost a single soul, even with talk of Atletico Madrid um, wanting... This is absolutely fine. I'm going to use this graphic. I want to bring it up on screen now. Shout out to Liam. Um, I'm going to... I don't know if Liam even watches my channel or whatever, but I've got to get this on screen. I have to get this on screen. Oh, I lost it. That is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Wow. Just for a moment, sit there and admire that squad depth. Who... Who could have... You know, unbelievable. If you got told that the team would look like that 12 months ago, you would have laughed. You would have... 13 months ago. You would have laughed. Strength and everything. That's scary. And you know what? For the first time... In a long, long time, I genuinely feel very, very confident heading into a Champions or a European group stage. Not that I've not felt confident in years gone by, but I feel confident of this group of players. I feel confident in this manager. I feel like we can avoid scalpings and scuddings and I'm hoping so anyway, touch fucking wood. But like, just look at that in every area of the park. And that's only like what... There's more beyond that as well. You know, we've got more players who can drop in and out. It is honestly crazy. That, that is unbelievable stuff. I'm absolutely buzzing with this window. I agree Starfelt's better than Jens as well, of course. Well, I'd put Starfelt in my start, but this isn't my graphic. I didn't, I didn't make this graphic, so don't get carried away. Um, wow. Shout out to Liam for making this. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly a bit lost for words. Sun Tzu Shaman. 7.99 Australian dollars, a signing of Abel Gard can allow Moy to play in a more advanced 10 role where he can be extremely effective, absolutely. I think, you seen Moy last night, how good he was at doing both getting forward and getting back anyway, I don't think he's too fast, he can do it all, but I do agree. And thank you very much for the donation, it's much appreciated. Um, that, I, I, I'm I honestly just so happy right now. I mean, I don't sound it or look at it because I'm fucking shattered, but... You know, and there's, there's, you know, we've got Gucci, McCarthy players like that. You know, we've got other boys coming in and out the team and coming up through the system as well. So much quality and options across the field for Celtic at this moment in time. And I'm very happy with that transfer window. Wow, I've been live for 50 minutes. I'm roasting and I'm absolutely shattered. So the window is closed. The stream is sadly over. But don't go anywhere for the next couple of days because we'll be back on the channel tomorrow with a podcast. We'll be back on Saturday to review that game against Rangers. And then it's right and they talk about Real Madrid after that. So it's a real fun time to make content and just to be a Celtic fan in general. Um, so I'm going to get to my bed. I'm up early tomorrow because I'm filming with a very special person. Hamish Milk Carton. So I'm going to meet him tomorrow morning. Um, so yeah. I need to get my bed early. Um, I want to be fresh for my appearance on 67 Hail Hail. Right, thank you everybody. We've had nearly a thousand viewers tonight. It's absolutely insane and I appreciate your support so, so much. And I appreciate every donation for tonight as well. People asking for my score predictions, watch the podcast tomorrow and you'll find out. Right, thank you ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time. Cheerio.